This is uh, an experience that not very many people have, isn't it? Oh, uh, it's just, it's an eternal pinch yourself thing that, um, you know, we're here before it opens to the public. And uh, uh, Benny is here from, uh, uh, well, he's actually from Germany, but um, he's coming to do some uh, 3D scanning of one of the uh, carvings, one of the sculptures that was found <coughs> this year. Um, it's all covered up, public haven't seen it. Um, and so we're, <laughs> we're with them when they uncover it. It's so exciting. Um, but uh -huh. yeah, being here at this time of day as well, I mean, I love this landscape. It is just... It's fantastic, uh, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, so much more dramatic than uh, I've ever envisioned for yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, video and photographs that I've seen of the place. Got to watch out, it's a bit slippery, the uh, <laughs> uh, the footpath here. Anyway, at this time in the morning, it's a bit... That's, uh, we and Benny there. Do you want a helping hand? Uh, pro yeah. Great okay. stuff. Right, and now under the wire. Oh my god. Well. Do we just jump from this? No, well, you can tell me Feel free. We're going actually down this way. <laughs> Okay. It's worth it, I've, I assure you. <laughs> okay. It's short like a word, isn't it? For yours, but it's a bit of a and breaks. I'm used to moving it. Right, now we're going down here. This is a loose one. Okay. Be careful with that one. If you can go onto that one, and then of down course. here, onto there, that'll be fine. Okay. <laughs> I do need a minute. <laughs> it's... <laughs> it is quite emotional, really. Uh... Just imagining people all those years ago. What were they doing down here? Were they just sitting here and having a chat? Oh, look. Look at the size of the damn things. You just don't, you, even from up the top, you get no impression of that at all, do you? Yeah. Um, when you think about it, what we're used to uh, seeing, at, you know, there's plenty of other megalithic sites about, you know, they moved this lump of stone and it weighs five tons, ten tons, whatever. And you look around this, <laughs> this whole thing, and just the immensity of uh, 
of the undertaking. Wink. Wednesday. Uh, this is uh, an image of two uh, gentlemen uh, being a bit sort of uh, overwhelmed, really. Uh, that's getting to be a cliche, though. It is a bit. So but, far. Um, yeah. I think it's only when you get down amongst stones that you realise quite how big they are. Yeah. They don't look so big when you're up there looking down amongst them or into them, but it's actually stunning, the scale of all of this when you're down here. And the craftsmanship in the carvings. <laughs> it's, uh, it's really quite staggering. I've only just noticed this stone um, it jutting out from... Uh, so that's a step. These are steps going... Oh, yeah. Thing of you, knowing that you're where other people were 10,000 years ago, 10,000 years ago, um, and you know, you're in that shared space, you know, you're standing where people stood or sitting where people sat. You know, I mean, the benches along here, you know, what, what were they down here having ceremonies and you know, but people sitting around the benches and watching what was going on? I don't know. Um, and what was the significance of that guy over there? Yes. What was the significance of that guy over there? Um, uh, he was only discovered this year. Um, and uh, what's fantastic about this is, look, its pigment is still on it. These things were all painted. He's still got the red in his mouth and there's black uh, down here, so obviously the rest of it is. I mean, there's some black along the flank, but um, but yeah, the, the, to see that, you know, you know that things were painted. Ah, oh, heavens! Details generally, you know, we, we we don't know what these holes were for, but the interesting thing is that it, this was always built into the hillside. This has always been underground. So the holes aren't for looking through or anything. The holes are for supporting something. Yeah. Um, uh, or maybe for putting a lamp in, but then why would you have a round one? It can't be that 
be a square one. Um, <laughs> so you even look at the tea pillars, you know, and, and there's uh, indentations for, well, you may be, was there a, you know, uh, another wooden post that went across from, you know, one side to the other? I don't know. Absolutely no idea. But there's all these little details that you think, well, what's that for? Because they'd have been for something. I was just noticing that Lee's cleaning. Arthur, he's got a major task ahead of him. <laughs> uh, um, so, uh, like I said earlier, uh, these kinds of uh, moments don't come uh, round very often. No. So, uh, if we don't get an opportunity now, um, when, then whenever, of saying uh, thank you, folks, um, for your support in getting us here. Mm. Uh, and uh, we hope what we deliver back to you uh, makes it all uh, Indeed. Uh, worthwhile yes. in terms of the adventure. And lots more to come, too. Uh, indeed. Yeah. And, uh, gosh, I mean, if this is the beginning of a grand adventure, if you like. Yeah. Um, moving forwards, you know, there's just still so much to do. <laughs> All right. Better go and do some work with a camera now. Mm, yeah, probably ought to. <laughs> 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 I'll tell you more about it later. Sorry. <laughs> Just levels of reuse. So, you, so they've made these walls, but you look, that's a reused stone. It might be a quern stone, I'm not sure. But it's certainly a worked stone from however long before they put this wall in. That's uh, amazing how much. Uh, and that, what's that? Carl, what was that? What's the rest of that carving? Yeah. Oh, that's a massive. Is that the scorpion? Noticed that there was more than one spider on this relief, uh, and, and that kind of makes it something different again, doesn't it? If you've got yeah. it repeated, um, uh, did I talk? Yeah, Mr. Pig with cranes. Yeah. Oh. But imagine it's all coloured. Oh, can you? Yeah, yeah, it must have been phenomenal. Yeah. It's everywhere you go, you get a slightly different perspective. And uh... <sighs> because otherwise, I mean, why would you do a. a... A bird facing outwards, you mean? Well, no, why would you put an animal here that's half covered by the wall? Of course you wouldn't. Yeah? So originally these pillars, I think, more or less all stood somewhere else. Yeah, 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 that's yeah. a good spot. Uh, and you, you probably didn't hear that. The fact that these are reused, the pillar T pillars are, re are reused from, yes. from somewhere previous because you've got carvings of animals yeah. that are I, in the wall. I was wondering about that. It was a question at the back of my mind. Um, it's these H or I symbols. You've heard about these H or I symbols. Yes, yeah, but... Uh, um, we don't know what they mean. 
we don't we can't interpret them but this building is particularly rich in this symbol so we've got these two here yeah if we go over here oh of course One. We know more spot as well around. We have one down here. Yes. The crescent, which is also quite uh, frequent in this building. And most excitingly, if you look down. Oh, oh. Yeah. Do you know, I walked past that earlier on and... Uh... There's one here, for example. There's one here. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. So this symbol what? obviously had some sort of meaning to them. And, of course, we just don't know. And it's also found on, on, on other small portable objects as well. Um, oh, they're beautiful, aren't they? Of what? Dodos. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> um, and this one was especially, this is quite interesting. Uh, we removed the, the, the fill from this part of the building. Yeah. This came out. And of course, this right next to it. And if you look carefully, or there was some red colouring oh. on the edge of this pit. It's probably gone now. But it was a bit red. Oh, you can see a little bit there. Yeah. So obviously, red colour, ochre, a special symbol like this, a small pit. We got very excited. Yes. We thought, have we got our first burial in a special building? Um, or a skull uh, nest or something like that. Um, I have to just point, we lifted it up. Um, but it's very symmetrical as well. I mean, that must have been so exciting. And what results here being used, yeah, on one side, these wedges. Um, but we lifted this up and it was empty and it was very shallow and it's more or less like a fault in the natural bedrock that they've just sort of incorporated into the what, so uh, same with that we don't know we haven't expected that yet right um and the other area of interest is here because the pedestal obviously mm. is carved from one piece but yes. here it's been cut into three pieces obviously removed and put back in and, uh, we don't know what's underneath. <laughs> so there's still so much more to discover in this building. I mean, this could be anything. It could be nothing and everything. We could yeah. lift it up. It could be absolutely nothing. Yeah. It could be just a fault in the in the in the surface of the rock of just tried to, you know. Yeah. On the other hand, it could be something quite spectacular. Um, the thing is, this, we've got channels here as well. I mean, it could be something to do with. Uh, moving liquids around. It could be something to do with, with rainwater seep, seeping in and it's somehow this draining it away. It could yeah. be a drain, some sort of drainage pit or something. Or it could be related to ritual. <laughs> well, but, you, do know. you know, I mean, it, it's interesting to see, you know, when, you, when you've got a pig mm. that you... <sighs> I'm the world's biggest cynic. As soon as people say ritual, then I start twitching. But, yeah. but the thing is that when you, you see something like that, yeah. And then you see, you know, the, is that an aurochs on the pillar over there? That, uh, uh, but, um, but it does make you wonder about uh, blood on a, you know, if it could be if you kill your pig. Yeah, of course. Um, and we know for a fact that here we are higher than behind in building C. So as you go right. down there, you can actually see the, the steps going down. So we're here on a higher step. Okay. And uh, yeah, they're just probably using areas that have been used for pouring before, and they've just uh, and smoothed the area, that carved out these, these pedest pedestals, whatever you want to call them. Um, and of course, I mean, they're using the, 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 the steps in the bedrock that have been well, perhaps originally natural and then later shaped by quarrying to place a building against. You can see here how steep it is. Yeah. yeah. Um, because from the top you get that impression, but from down here you can really see how steep that, that slope yeah. is. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean you can you can see the, the stratified. The one behind though is a is a original Neolithic wall, and this is one of the terrace walls that they were using to try and sort of 
to support the slope in a way. Nice. It was their attempt to sort of stop the erosional process that yeah. was threatening this part of the building. I think that was perhaps also um, uh, an answer to the sort of pressure coming from the slope and then reinforcing the building to make it more stable. Yeah. yeah. Gosh. So, so I wasn't thinking this whole thing was like a one piece. Yeah, so that, that's his belt going around because mm. he's got his hands on his waist. Okay. Okay, I was thinking, yes, there's the buckle. Yeah. And then uh, this, I thought maybe it could be like feet. Okay, they are feet, but now you're saying it's the feet of the animal. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's like he's wearing a fox fur. Right, right, right. Now I can see. <laughs> Need some explanation, all right, <laughs> because after all these years seeing it so many times, I, I didn't put it all together yeah. like that. Thank you. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Something that's really interesting when you, um, I mean, thank goodness we've got Lee with us, um, because the the details that you just wouldn't notice if you were left on your own to look around, you wouldn't notice. And there are there are certain symbols that absolutely no idea what they mean, but repeated motifs that um, you know, just say for example, maybe it was a, a writing of sorts. There are these 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 designs like uh, crescents and what looks like a sideways. Well, it looks like an H, really, a letter H, yeah. and it's repeated yeah. in all sorts of places around the site. On the floor. What on earth does it mean? It's yeah. you know, carved on the floor as well, and uh, um, uh, clearly it's something significant. It's something important, but yeah. no idea what. Uh, so much stuff, and the level of sophistication of everything, the building. Uh, you know, forget the carvings. The sophistication of the building is staggering. The way, uh, you know, even uh, right at the top of the walls, you can see that, that they, oh, built, the the walls, uh, they, they built walls to try to hold back the slip of uh, the slope because obviously it was always moving and they were in a constant um, situation of repair and maintenance. So even walls up there that were to uh, hold back the sliding bank. Uh, it's uh, just every minute there's another detail that pops out at you. It's uh, far too much to contain in yeah. the short time we've got as well. Lee was pointing this out to us earlier on. Uh, so when they made this room, so this is, this is the bedrock on the floor. Okay. And they've actually cut down, they've cut the bedrock away so that these are left. You can't see it so much on this one because of what I'm going to say in a minute. But if you look at, um, uh, say, the end of this one or maybe on the, the, uh, the T-pillar on the other side, that the bedrock has been cut down to leave the plinth standing proud. Yeah. Now here, they've cut this side of it away and then, I mean, this is cut into three pieces and this has been put back and it's not been excavated, but it's like, well, is there something underneath this? Could it be the first burial here? You know, absolutely no idea. But the point is they've cut this away and put it back. Uh, <laughs> so that must be significant of something. There must be something relevant under here. Just say it's very frequent yeah. in this building. Uh, more snakes, and even under the chin, this is the so-called stoa that Klaus Schmidt always referred to as a stoa. Right, there's a robe that uh, this thing that a priest wears, this sort of thing that comes, <gasps> perhaps an item of clothing. But a lot of the pillars have them. Yes, these stoa, and um, over there as well. Yeah. Um, so that's a, um, one of the characteristics of, of these pillars. Many of these pillars. I love this pillar here. It's one of my favorite oh, pillars. Oh, I mean, stunning. But now we have the boar here and the boar there. Yes. That makes it With the bigger and snarl as well. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, the fox. And they all have phalli, yeah? Fox is a phallus, pig has a phallus. 
Sadece çok sadece. Oh, that's used for something else. We just don't know. Of course, this is just going to be the in the back. And the, this is your typical film. In fact, we can see the film back over here. So this is the stuff that we're excavating when we're excavating in these buildings. And it's tough going. Yeah. You can imagine, you know, it's, it's not an easy thing to excavate. Um, but this is the stuff that's come down the slope. Yeah. This is the rubble, this size usually. Um, we've got bits of bone in there, like you just sound. We've got flint yeah, in there as well. Um, the odd bit of human bone occasionally. But if we think this is just coming down from the slope, and this is earlier sediment deposits. Yes. And what we're getting here is like, you know, refuse pits and uh, bits of floor, bits of uh, the architecture, the walls, um, perhaps the odd underfloor burial, subfloor burial that's come down as well, skull. Everything that's up there in the upper stories or in, the, in, you know, in these buildings has come down the slope and it's been deposited here in this building. So it's just a big mixture of stuff. We've got stuff from the PPNA, from the PPMB. Um, so showing us also that we have deposits from both of those periods up on the slope, which we know anyway from the architecture. But uh, that's a showing you know, what we've got uh, here in front of us when we're excavating these. So you've just got a tumbled mix coming A down. tumbled mix of, of, of stuff, deposits, um, which are no longer in situ. They've just come down and been redeposited in, in, in the special buildings. And of course, this very quick deposition has led to the good preservation of the buildings yes. at the end of the day. Yes. God, can you imagine that? Can you imagine from the from, from the troweling that you've done? Imagine excavating this, just brushing and nibbling that away. Nightmare. We are using chopper. Yeah. You know, uh, little hand choppers. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and obviously, if we see anything coming in with brushes and that sort of thing, or travel. Mm. Um, but uh, yeah, it's it's uh, it's still heavy going for, for so anyone. What, that's what, what happens to all the spoil? Um, what we do is the obviously it goes to the sieve. Um, sometimes it goes to flotation. Mm -hmm. um, the soil, the sieve soil. Um, we don't flotate everything because it's just too much. Yeah, sure. You know, we have certain areas, sections that we do flotation for. Um, uh, the stuff is then, if it's not flotated, it's sieved. The sieved soil we keep because we're using that for the conservation. We're actually remaking the mortar to remortar the water, to put the mortar, and we're using the material oh, from the you? site. Uh, because of course it's it's you know it's the best stuff to use. It's better of than using. Uh, and of course we mix that with other stuff, uh, you know, uh, goat hair, that sort of thing, um, nice. to make it recognisable as a modern re, yeah. um, sort of mortaring. Um, but the actual soil itself is actually coming from, from the site that we're using for that conservation. So it's coming from here. Um, the fines are obviously taken that's out. That's impressive, I've got to say, that's <laughs> impressive. The fines are taken out and obviously they're backed up and taken back to the excavation house where they're processed. Yeah. And then some of which go into the museum and it's studied by our experts and, and, and also, whatsoever. And, and then uh, the rest of the stuff, the stone, we also keep because we can use it for protective walling. Yeah. Um, to protect parts of the architecture. And uh, other bits of you know, rubble, etc. Um, we then put, we backfill certain excavated pits or exca excavation trenches that uh, you know, collapsing. That sort of thing. We can use it then to, to fill those areas um, to make the site a little more, you know, a bit quieter. Because otherwise, it'd be like a Swiss cheese. So if we sort of put things, fill of certain trenches back in, yeah. where we don't have anything to see, um, right. then uh, that actually stabilizes the whole site and also you know, that we've got in that presentation as well because we've got lots of business coming like you saw yesterday um, and yeah so we have to combine everything we've got the excavation the academic questions we've got the presentation of the site because it's a UNESCO site we've got lots of visitors and we have to think about conservation because everything we excavate has to be conserved and preserved. Say again. Fox room. Say that again. F Fox room. So <laughs> and a little piggy.
of the piggy <laughs> being chased by a doggy. <gasps> a hunting scene. Mm. It's still mythic, it, you know. Yeah, but. yeah, absolutely. It's just that, um, you know, we, I mean, we, 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 we're saying it deliberately mm. taking the piss, but mm. when you look at the things that we don't know, yeah. you know, um, exactly. um, and so when you see stuff like that yeah. and you think that, that if it was, it, even if it was 500 years oh. after the site had fallen into disuse, yeah. you just don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's just... Exactly. Uh, it's exactly. just people being people. But this is this is great. I love these. That's fantastic. I've something down here as well. I mean, it's a bit unclear, um, but of course, these are the two central points in Building D with the boxes. Um, and then uh, down here we have, unlike Building D, we now have a plaster floor. Or yes. uh, you can see what sort of floor oh, yeah. it is. Yeah. It's often been called a. a, 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 a <laughs> <laughs> and I can't think of the bloody name of the bloody floor. Um, terrazzo. Terrazzo. Uh, it's referred to as terrazzo, but right. to be a terrazzo, it has to be burned at very high temperatures. And we've had analyses done, and the, the thinking is that we haven't got a proper terrazzo floor here, but obviously it is an artificial floor that's probably trying to mimic the proper okay. stone floor that we have in, in D, for yeah. example, or C. But anyway, um, that's by the by. Here we have like a, a ball. Sort of, it's either part of it. We don't know how far further down we have to go to get to the the natural. Yes. So perhaps under there there is a floor like we have in D and C, like with the smooth rock surface. We don't know. This could be a later phase. Right. Um, but we do have this here, which is obviously a large piece of rock. Whether that rock is attached to the natural smooth yeah. floor, we don't know. Um, apart from that, we have here the, the portal stone, which we think is has fallen from the roof. Yes. Um, so the flange here would have been sort of incorporated into the roof, and then this would have been the opening to the building, because otherwise we have no clear entrances in the in this part of the of the building in this younger phase, for, at least. And uh, there would have been a ladder that came down, obviously, into the building from this uh, from this portal stone. And these portal stones, that's Ben's uh, PhD, he's actually sort of collating and collecting all the portal stone fragments that we have in the site. Just, um, I can't get over the, you know, the weight of that in your roof. Well, yeah, it's, a, it's like a stone. And we I mean, have these negatives. Uh, in the field. So, obviously, fox, big fox, but piggy, and potentially being chased by a doggy. And another one, so that could be a hunting scene. The thing is that I don't think that would be a baby pig because it's nearly the same size as the big pig. True. The tail's going the other way as well, isn't it? I mean, look at the tail, yeah. the direction of the tail. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. The piggy tail goes that way. Yeah, and that's going that way. And that yeah. could be a piggy. That could be a baby piggy, but that's, that could be a dog. Yeah. 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 I'll pick up your bag on the way round. We come to the walls of the earlier uh, building phases. And uh, of course we have wonderful leashes. Oh. <laughs> it's so exciting. I tell you what, you I would down. like to know which uh, yeah. spiders are making the webs you've got I'm down here. Know, yes. Yeah. Cobweb over. <laughs> That's um with a frame around the entrance flanked by two foxes with the or of the Ukrainian. How long was this used for that? Uh, we haven't got radiocarbon dates from this room from the walls of this room yet, which is the best way of dating these buildings. We've done it for building D and we could show that we had two clusters of radiocarbon dates. The ones on the eastern side were like early PPNV, so mid ninth millennium. Um, and the ones on the west side were a bit older, um, but they were from also an earlier phase of the building. So we think that these buildings could have been or probably long lived and were probably in use for at least a few centuries. I just think it's lovely that that anywhere you look, where this has slipped down, this is slippage um, as the as the as the hill collapsed and yeah. it just slipped down, and everywhere brought down from further up the uh, the settlement. There's bone everywhere. What would that be? Oh my lord! Oh my lord! 
just everywhere. <laughs> that, I mean, you, you know, you take it for granted, but that, that's probably eight, nine, ten thousand years old. God. <laughs> There's bone fragments absolutely everywhere. That's somebody's dinner. That's somebody's dinner from ten thousand years ago. <laughs> That's the original doorway that you yeah. just walked through there. Yes. And this is probably where you would have sat next to the shaman. <laughs> Nearly would have done his mushrooms. <laughs> If you look here, look, we've got little indentations here as well, little miniature cut marks. That's for lots of little pools of blood. Yes. <laughs> so here you would have sat in building A. Um, what we've got here then is a rectangular structure. Now if you stand up and look behind you, this outer wall is, a round, is the older phase, and it was a round building. But within that, they placed a smaller building, which was rectangular with this house. Nice, okay. So we're now yeah. really the transition from PPNA to early PPNB because obviously from early PPNB we know from them sort of 8,700, 8,000. Yeah. We're getting rectangular structures. So we've got the really another piece of evidence for this longevity of these special buildings and that the later phase was in an EPPNB rectangular form, the outer was. But we still need a radiocarbon date, so that's just confirm that. Um, the floor here hasn't been, this is not the floor, it hasn't been completely excavated, it goes down a bit further. Right. Um, well, so this is just compacted this is just, dirt This then. is just compacted dirt, this is the, the old okay. uh, excavation level. Um, this pillar, in fact, is probably the wrong way around, because the cranium that would be on the front is actually at the back. Ah, um, yeah, okay, I didn't see that. <laughs> and the farmer was in the field, just above our heads now, and he couldn't get his plough past this large stone, and he was going at it with a, with a uh, sledgehammer. And Klaus stepped in, and uh, that's where the explosion wow. started. But I mean, that's a bit of a modern mythology for you. Okay. But uh, I think that the story is true. You know, that were, that, that the land was being farmed, and of course, the stones were poking out and were in the way. Um, but, and, and you sometimes get sort of plough sort of uh, marks on top of some of the stones where you see the plough going over Do you know, I, <laughs> I find, I find this really uh, strange because it, I mean, clearly they were capable of doing these incredible things, and yet this is bordering on unique in the site, isn't it? Uh, why? And even to the extent that the tail is perforated up here. It's a staggering piece of work. They've taken this whole thing back, leave it, ah, oh, wow. Um, But we have, uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff in the museum that you just don't know, you haven't seen yet, but it's similar quality to that. But it's been, you know, it's been taken. So have, have you had any hint on whether it's broken pillars or anything else? You know, do you think there were other relief uh, sculptures? Well, what that... we do have that aren't actually here anymore, but uh, now in the museum, are uh, like what I refer to as prehistoric gargoyles. So we okay. have like animals, which at the bottom, or one end, they have like a pointy sort of cone. And they originally were embedded in the walls. And at the front, you have like a jumping animal. Wow. So we do have sort of that sort of thing from the site. Uh, they're called protons. And uh, we have one come out this year as well. Um, but various animals uh, that appear then, you know, they have this cone at the end that was embedded in the wall and they look like they're jumping out. So really prehistoric Gobekli Tepe gargoyles. Amazing. Yeah. Those stones 
seem to be uh, much less eroded than any of the others that you turn around and stare at. This is a sight that not very many people get to see, not only Gebekli Tepe in the mist, but from a very, very different angle. There is so much detail that's off the beaten track. For instance, what are these steps doing down here in that corridor leading up here? And talking of the beaten track, uh, we're just behind the uh, walkway that everybody takes to gaze yeah. at the main special building. So nobody sees what's just underneath over that there. section. Yeah. But uh, I'm going to take you on a little walk now mm. outside the main buildings, outside in the directions that people never, never look. No. Uh, and at the details there. Starting, I suppose, right in front of us. Everything that you can see in the section that we're now going to walk through, this is all residential. This is where people were living. Yeah. Um, and you get a true sense, well, I say a true sense, you get some kind of sense of the vast expanse of time that's involved in a lot of this because there are reused things in so many of the walls where there are old grinding stones mm. that, uh, so when they've rebuilt a wall, remade a wall, They've put old pieces in place that that's no good anymore, but it's still a good piece of stone. So we can show we can show you that. Yes. So uh, I think the best idea is to is to walk uh, and see what we can pick up on the way. You want to go that way? Yeah. If we can. This is not rubble. These are the remains of, well, 10,000 year old walls. And as we pick our way through, you'll be able to see the signs of people living here. Oh, the first one I've spotted right here, this grindstone, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. 